So I've just fitted the correct size belt, picked up a K6103 as opposed to the K6980 that was on there for the M65. So larger pulley and maybe a little bit further left. Uh, so that added around five inches to the belt length. And the tensioner looks to be in a good spot. It's um, maybe a third of the way extended as it sits. Just about ready for a uh, test start. So I've hooked up a very short section including a MAF sensor. So intake is all sealed up, all NA. It just happens to be going through the intercooler. I've also wired up this 12 volt battery to activate the AC clutch. So I've got it hooked up to a switch. When it's not clutched, you can turn the rotors independently or they can be standing uh, still. When it's clutched, it's all one unit. So let's uh, start her up and see what happens. Man, I'm not used to not hearing the line. All right, let's activate the clutch. This is the electric bypass valve as hooked up to a switch, which just uh, flips the polarity of power going through. It's kind of a taut switch, so this was a, a bad idea to film with one hand. There we go. So I'm not going to have feedback or an automatic stop. I'm just going to have to assume it's going to take three seconds to open. One, two, three. And then it's fully open, of course. And while it's a pretty nice valve, there will still be, you know, pinhole gaps and stuff. I think that's a small price to pay um, for being able to flip the supercharger on and off. Um, and if this means I lose, you know, 0.1 psi of pressure or something like that, that's okay. Easier job for the engine. And. Uh, at a high level, I intend to probably cut this a little bit shorter so that it doesn't it such a wide assembly, but um, I very much want it to be kind of in the middle of an H-pipe where the supercharger sits on one side and, you know, normally with this shut, uh, air will come in, get pushed through the supercharger and down into the charge pipe, but with this open and the supercharger off, uh, air will be able to flow straight through towards the engine. Well, that was an enlightening test drive. Um, I just drove the car NA with this filter, the factory math, the same one I'd been using for the supercharged setup and then charge pipe down through the intercooler at the front, up into there, and into the throttle body over here. Uh, so you would never use this as like your naturally aspirated setup. Usually you want the shortest intake path possible so that as soon as this throttle body opens, airflow rushes past your MAF sensor and you detect you know, the need for increased fuel or whatever else. I think that this very long feedback loop caused some drivability issues with the NA setup. You didn't constantly have this like rush of air uh, from the supercharger and um, the car struggled to idle. Uh, I think once you're at you know a steady throttle or whatever, it was fine. Um, but this does tell me that you know once I have everything set up with the SC14 and supercharger's working and I've got my bypass valve, etc. I might not have very good drivability if my NA intake path is, you know, this long-winded. 
pun intended. Uh, so I think what I want uh, instead is for the bypass valve to not just bypass the supercharger, which it must do to function as a bypass valve, but I think I want it to also bypass the intercooler, like the whole, most of the length of the charge pipe. So I'm picturing a setup where I've got my cone like here somewhere near the cold air intake, right behind it, a mass airflow sensor, somewhere near by that, the PCV return, right? And then I think I could imagine having the H pipe so that, uh, you know, once shut, the path goes into the supercharger, but once open, the path goes, I guess, all the way to the throttle body. Um, so instead of a single elbow here, more of a Y shape, where when it's running in supercharged mode, there's no path from here straight to the throttle body, uh, and the air has to take the long way around through the intercooler. But when in naturally aspirated mode, air can just take the shortcut and re-enter the throttle here as well. I don't know if there's any implications for having air travel towards the throttle and then kind of go down a dead end and bounce back or anything like that. Um, but I'm liking that idea. Um, I think one of the next tests I should do is to flip this elbow around and just run an intake right here. Future me here, realizing what exactly went wrong. It wasn't anything to do with the length of the charge pipe or the MAF sensor placement or anything like that. It's the fact that I had uh, been running with a vacuum leak. Uh, both the port on the intake manifold that fed the diverter or blow off valve, that was disconnected. So just lighting on metered air into the intake, that's surely what made it lean out and stall at idle. And then also my PCV uh, was just a you know, dangling hose. So the way a PCV can throw off fueling is metered air enters your engine, your crankcase, and then it just escapes out the PCV without being burned. So yeah, mystery solved. Uh, I will go back and film a proper NA zero to 60 run. Um, for now, let's ignore the results. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching.